we did it. We finished the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers collection with this Yellow Ranger. I have finished them. Let's get into how to make this thing. What's going on, everybody? I'm Dylan. I run Quest for Nostalgia, where I teach how I do all my 3D printed props. We've been going through the Mighty Morphin Power Ranger set, and goodness, I cannot believe that I actually have these done. It has been a long time coming, and it is just so rewarding to see these all on the shelf, and I can't wait to help you guys get these helmets done. Thank you for everybody who has been supporting me, watching the videos, the tutorials, been here for the long haul. I really appreciate you guys, and I want to start off with that. Thank you so, so much. Thank you for subbing and liking and commenting all the YouTube things. You guys are amazing. We've really been growing, and it's all because of you guys. I love you guys so, so much. So let's celebrate the ending of, you know, me having this collection here. If you notice this color scheme, there is no panel lining here. That's because I do season one Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, which is using a lot of the Zeo Ranger footage, which is the Japanese stuff. And if you notice, I'll put in some pictures here. There isn't panel lining. That's why my Green Ranger doesn't have panel lining. That's why my Black Ranger here has very minimal panel lining just on the bridge of the nose and the outline of the visor there, the blue, all of those. I go for that first season of Mighty Morphin and it has a very clean look and that's what I like on these. I like to have it nice and clean. And so I've seen a lot of people say, where's the panel lining on the green? Where's the panel lining? There's different versions. If you look through it, there's so many versions of that helmet has been redone so many times. But if you look at the season one stuff, it is not panel lined like crazy. It's not panel lined at all. It's a very clean helmet. And that's what I went with. So I know you guys are going to comment below. Oh my gosh, where are the panel lines? If you want to do the panel lining, that's awesome. It's a whole nother step. But this is the look that I've been going for. And I'm so excited to have this kind of season one Mighty Morphin setup here. Let me know in the comments below. Are you into panel lines? Are you into the clean setup? Just let me know. I have love for both of them. So let's get into how to finish this helmet. I start with 80 grit. I start with a power sander and I just go through the big open surfaces that I can reach with it and really get over there. I don't try to go into all the nooks and crannies because you can end up burning through the plastic. Just the big open surfaces. That's what I hit with the power sander. Next, I then wrap 80 grit around a sanding sponge and that helps me get into the little bit of tighter spaces there. I go over the entire thing again there. And then after that, I take little strips of 80 grip and I really go for those details into the nooks and crannies of the helmet, into the detail lines, into the mouth, all those spots. I use a little strip and I go through and I sand really tightly into those spots. After 80 grit, I do 120 and do all of those steps again. I use the power sander, I use the sanding sponge, and then I use little strips to get in those nooks and crannies again. The next step I do is duplicolor filler primer, but you could actually do the Bondo glazing putty before this, and it actually might work a little bit better because sometimes they have a reaction with each other. But for this, I did duplicolor filler primer first, and I did a nice heavy coat over that, making sure you know it's not running or anything like that, but you can be a little bit looser when you spray it and not worry about runs because you're going to be sanding again. After the duplicolor is done and it's all nice and gray, I can see the little spots that may need a little bit touch up with the Bondo. So I go through with the spot putty and I touch in those spots that need to have a little bit more filling in there. With that looking nice, then it's time to sand for 220. So I go through and I sand the whole helmet down. I don't use the power sander at this point. I just go through and use the sanding sponge and then the little detailed strips for getting that 220 step done. This next step is actually kind of skippable too. I use a sandable primer after the 220, but that allows me to see all the sanding that I've done because I'm going to go into the next step. But if you don't want to, if you want to go straight from 220 into 320 grit, you definitely can without doing the sandable primer. But like I said, it's kind of hard to see where I sanded the last step with the 220 and then going to the 320. So I hit it with a sandable primer and then now it's time to wet sand 320 with it being primed again it is a clean surface so then i can go through and make sure i'm sanding every inch of that helmet with the wet sand so i'm just using little strips to really go through and get into all those tight spaces and make sure this helmet is really really smooth with that helmet all nice and sanded and smooth before we hit it with the primer for our painting steps i then add the buckles because i want the buckles to be primed as well so i put them before that initial priming layer I have a tutorial completely on how to do the class super in depth. So if you need any extra help on how to do the class, check out that video. So I ended up having a terrible paint failure and it was this Krylon Sunbeam Yellow did not react well at all. So I had to sand it all the way back down. I did the entire helmet all the way over 80 grit, 120, 220, filler brown, everything all over twice, right? And so now we're back to square one. 
we had to then prime it with a flat white. That's going to really lay down great for the yellow. Usually I like to do black primers when I have things like metallics and things like that. But with the yellow, you want to lay it over top of a white. So I got a flat white primer. I did two thin coats of that, just making sure we don't get any runs. So that way we don't have to sand it again. After the white is done, I used a Rust-Oleum yellow this time instead of the Krylon yellow because I didn't know if I was getting a paint reaction by having two different, you know, companies with the Dupa color, the Rust-Oleum, the Krylon. I just decided to stick with the Rust-Oleum yellow this time and it laid down gorgeously. The Krylon took me so many coats when I tried to do it the first time. This one laid down, I did three thin yellow coats but I really probably could have got away with just two. I just wanted good coverage, so I did three thin layers, 10 minutes apart between drying times with that, and it laid down and it came out so, so nice. So originally the first time I did uh, a black and silvers and I masked off the silver and then painted the rest yellow, but this time I ended up painting the yellow before doing the silver. So we did the yellow, so now you're seeing I had to mask off you know, the different areas of the yellow. I try to mask little areas and use a lot more paper so I'm not putting tape all over top of the helmet. Then it was time for silver. I used a metallic Rust-Oleum and I did it straight over top of the yellow. Like I said, usually I do it over top of black, but it came out looking really, really nice. I didn't have any issues with it losing any bit of the shine or anything like that. I think it came out really well. So don't be afraid to just go through and do it over top of the yellow. So once I pulled that masking up, I ended up having a tiny failure in the corner of the mouth and it was definitely a letdown. The helmet was looking so gorgeous and it really sucks to have any bit of a mistake, especially after I had that huge mistake and had to start all the way over. But what I did was I took that Rust-Oleum yellow, I sprayed it into an extra little cap that I had and I brush painted that on there. Really thin layers as well, not trying to overwork it because it can wrinkle and get nasty. So I just sprayed a little bit extra, used a throwaway brush, and I just touched up that corner of the mouth and it came out really, really nice. Then for the eyes, I used acrylic paint. Uh, it was just some Vallejo model color, uh, just black. Any black acrylic paint is gonna work. If you struggle with doing the lines and keeping the lines nice and straight, uh, I just used tape to do just those and then I freehanded the curve of it and it was pretty easy. I, I've done models for a long time so I have a little bit more dexterity with painting brush paints but if you need to just mask all the way around the eye and get your lines nice and crisp. And with all the colors laid down it was looking awesome and it was time for the 1k clear coat. I just used Dupacolor 1k clear coat like I use with all my other helmets and it came out looking fantastic. I cannot believe that it came out looking this good. It's so, so nice to have this thing finished finally, especially after that paint failure that I had the first time and the little mess up that I had there. But all of those things came out looking super nice in the end. Now let's talk about the visor. I'm going to do a really in-depth tutorial on exactly how to do visors as well, just like I did with the clasps. I filmed a very detailed guide for how to do that, so expect that video. But yeah, you can use face masks, um, the welding shields. I have two different versions here that I'm showing. If it's a big helmet or you have a bigger head, you may have to use the welding shield. For this one, this actually could use the face mask instead, which I really like because they're very thin and pliable that fits really nicely into the visor spot. I just make a paper template on the inside. I cut it till it fits in there looking nicely. Get it done with paper first, then transfer it over to your visor. And then I use 5% window tint on that visor. I'll show exactly how to do that. Just put a little bit of water on there, squeegee the tint over top of it, trim it. And then I hot glue that into place here into the helmet and it holds, it looks really nice. And it just is dark, it looks nice. You can still see out of it really, really well. Uh, and I love the way that the visors come out using that method. And then the last step of this is to elastic the top to create a good hinge. So I just add two strips of elastic on the top here, hot glued into there to have the top connected in there nicely. The clasp hold it in there as well, but that helps out as well to have the elastic in the, the top. And it's time to add the helmet to the collection. It is mind blowing to see this together. I'm so unbelievably happy. Thank you guys for being here as I did these helmets. You get to see the other things like the Red Ranger Turbo and the suit that I did where I did the full White Ranger armor. But I am so excited to have this done. It is time to move on to the Iron Man Mark 46 build. I'm going to be doing the whole suit. We're making good progress on that now. That is where my focus is going to be stuck on for right now. I'm going to try to have that thing done. Uh, and I'm going to show you guys exactly how I do that as well. 
Let me know in the comments below what do you think of the Yellow Ranger helmet. Again, do you like panel lines? Do you like it without? Do you like the clean, simple look of this? Uh, and, you know, let me know what your favorite season of Power Rangers is. Are you excited for the new Netflix special coming out? I definitely wanted to have this done by that as well. So, you know, just super excited. And I really thank you guys so much for being here on this journey. If you've made it this far in the video, you are the backbone of the channel. Seriously, watch time helps so much. I love you guys so, so much. We're getting so close to 2,000 subscribers. So if you've made it this far, hit that subscribe button, like, comment, all the things to help me grow. I love you guys, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace. <laughs>